relationship with China, India is having a long border with China and Pakistan. How do we tackle with it? You know, we engage an enemy in three modes. One is a defensive mode. That is, you see all the chokidar, the chaprasis outside. That is, if somebody comes here, we'll prevent him. We will defend this. One is the defensive offense. That is, to defend ourselves, we will go to the place from where the offense is coming. And third is the offensive mode, where you go outright. Nuclear threshold is a difficulty in the offensive mode, but not in the defensive offense. While we are working today only in the defensive mode. Now, when we come into the defensive offense, then we start working on the vulnerabilities of Pakistan. It can be economic, it can be internal security, it can be political, it can be their isolation internationally, it can be their this thing like that, of exposing their terrorist activities, or it can be anything. It can be defeating their um, uh, policies in Afghanistan, making it difficult for them to manage internal political balance or internal security. I'm not going into those details. But when you change the engagement from the defensive mode, because in the defensive mode you throw 100 stones on me, I stop 90, still 10 hurt me, and I can never win. Because either I lose or there's a stalemate. You start war at your time, you throw a stone when you want, you have a peace when you want, you have the talks when you want. We, if you are in the defensive offense, we will see where the balance of equilibrium is. Pakistan's vulnerability is many, many times higher than of India. Once they know that India has shifted its gear from the defensive mode to defensive offense, they will find that it is unaffordable for them. You can do one Mumbai, you may lose Baluchistan. There is no nuclear war involved in that. There is no engagement of troops. If you know the tricks, we know the tricks better than you. You know, earlier people used to say that, well, you see, Indian intelligence isn't very good. You see, in four years, we have got one incident. In 2008, we had November, this thing. Now, ISI is very good. See, where is the ISI today? Yesterday, they have beheaded 23 soldiers' heads and sent it to the army chief. During that time when they are having talks with Tariq Taliban in Pakistan. They cut their heads and sent it. They kidnapped 300 army contingent with four colonels commanding them and took them. 40,000 persons have been killed in the last two and a half years. They are totally helpless and these are the people whom they had recruited, whom they had trained, whom they had worked with and they are not able to find it out. It is that difficult a war. Once you understand in this perspective, then you will know what India has done in the last 25 years or 30 years in battling it. We had a long border, we have a big vulnerable population, the entire st uh, strength of a government was behind the terrorists, we had, they had the collaborative networks in, uh, among the drug peddlers, among the smugglers, among these things, you know, um, uh, currency counterfeiters, everything, India's entire, entire world, they were able to suck into their influence and in spite of that, we have been able to contain it and deny them any strategic advantages or results. We have lost valuable human lives, but the country has grown from strength to strength. So don't underestimate India's strength. Both in the, our only difficulty has been, that is we have been in the defensive mode. If we had changed the shift, changed the gear into at least partially getting into the defensive offensive mode, probably we could have reduced a certain amount of the casualties that we have suffered. What have they gained in 